Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we are building our Unraid server. Again. No, really, for real this time. I'm really, I'm going to build it again for, yeah. Roll the intro. So let's talk about why do I keep coming back to Unraid? Well, damn it, I like Unraid. I like the idea of Unraid. I like the fact that Unraid kind of, it's not the fact that it's uh, the, the best NAS out on the market. I mean, the way Unraid handles their drives is pretty cool, the way Unraid works. You set up your largest drive as your parity drive, and then you can have any size drives underneath Unraid that are the same size or smaller. And then when you go to upgrade Unraid, when you want to increase the size, you, you do your parity drive first, and then you can increase your largest drive. I like the way Unraid does that. That's, that's cool. Um, but that's not the main reason I, I want to use Unraid. I mean, NASs are a dime a dozen these days, right? I think you would agree. No, it's the way, you, it, it's the way it puts everything in one nice little neat Linux-based package. You can do virtualization. You can do Docker containers. You can run uh, apps that are written specifically for Unraid. You can uh, set aside and pass through uh, devices, uh, video cards, USB uh, ports, um, drives, uh, and you can do it all through a, 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 a simple, easy to use interface that tells you your drive status and your temperatures and your, it's like the ultimate home PC kit for the biggest nerd you can imagine out there. That's what the appeal of Unraid is for me, is that you can do all this stuff, this wonderful stuff with Unraid, and uh, it, it turns it into whatever you have laying around into a incredible toy box. Plus you can run things like Plex and MB on here. So, you know, if you've got a limited amount of funds and a limited amount of, of equipment, but yet it's still decent equipment, and we'll We'll cover what I'm building this Unraid server out of because it's not anything by modern standards at all. You could have a pretty well stacked out system for a small amount of money. Now, Unraid does charge for their software and they should, frankly. For what all this will do, and as you'll see as we get into this video, what all Unraid is capable of doing, I think you will agree it's money well spent. It's not. It's not a, a large amount of money. It's just right at the right price point for me anyway. Now, I'm, I don't have state-of-the-art components in here in this thing by a long shot. Hell, the motherboard in here is almost, I believe it's 10 years old. It's the Gigabyte GAZ77DS3H. It's, the, uh, uh, it's a full-size ATX motherboard. It's got a couple of PCI Express slots in it. I've got a uh, i7-3770 CPU. And I've got 24 gig of DDR3 RAM. Uh, it's got USB 3 built onto it. Now, one of the nice things about using this motherboard and this processor is that this i7 CPU, which I think I got off of eBay for 20 or 30 bucks, has got a built-in uh, GPU in it too. So we could dedicate that GPU to Unraid and then I can add other components as I see fit. And what I've decided to add on this unit is I want to get I had a choice. I could run two video cards in here to experiment with video pass-through on Unraid, or I could put a video card and a 10 gig NIC in here. Well, I'm not real concerned about having 10 gig speed to transfer files around. What I want to play around with is pass-through to virtual machines. So I've got a gigabyte RX 570 uh, AMD video card, Radeon video card in here. Uh, that was in my old daily driver. So I've got that in a PCI slot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this GTX 950 I have had laying around. This used to be, this was in my, in fact, this was in this machine to begin with uh, before I even started my YouTube channel. So this thing has had a lot of, has had a lot of uh, uh, use, to say the least. And of course, the fans went out on this thing. In fact, this one, even though I replaced them, these fans are getting a little old. 
again but I jury kind of jury rigged and you know just did a hot glue method of putting a couple of fans on here to keep this thing cool and I'm gonna put this in here as well in the second PCI slot and then I'll be able to pass both of those uh, both of those GPUs through to virtual machines under Unraid but anyway that's the plan and this is what I mean by it's a tinkers a tinkerer's delight uh, because and a geek's delight because we get to play with all this wonderful stuff now I've also got a 256 gig SSD drive in there that I'm going to use as my cache drive um, but it'll be my uh, it'll be my SSD drive where my virtual machines run off of and then I've got four two terabyte Seagate uh, regular spinning hard drives in here these are the drives I originally started my uh, my channel with so uh, they're all in good shape and still running strong so we'll put them in there in an unraid array I've got four of those uh, one of the limitations with this system board is two of the serial ATA ports are uh, SA uh, serial ATA 3 the others are serial ATA 2 so I only get 300 megabits per second out of those out of those other serial ATA ports but I, who cares these drives can't keep up with that data rate as it is but so the plan is is let's oh the other thing I have in here is a USB header uh, that plugs into the motherboard uh, pin you know the the I think it's an eight or nine pin connector on the motherboard and then gives you two USB slots I didn't want the USB key hanging out the back of this thing and possibly getting damaged are broken so I've put the uh, I put the USB drive inside the computer and plugged it into into one of those uh, one of those uh, headers on the motherboard so that I can just boot uh, right off the USB in there so it'll make for a good it'll make for a good unit then I've got a 450 watt and tech power supply in here I think at full bore this thing will pull about maybe 120 140 watts somewhere right around there so the goal today is to get this thing built and the initial configuration done and then after that's done uh, we'll be able to then start doing some other videos around Unraid and I would imagine my next video is going to have to do with virtualization I think that'll probably be the first video I do on Unraid but we shall see so let's get this thing built and let's get it configured right now
Alright, so I thought I'd just share with you my final setup. So as you can see up here, I am on version 6.9.2. I just updated it yesterday. And uh, I've got all my drives in the array. I've got the parity synced and I've even copied some data onto these drives. You'll see I have my cache disk down here is the 250 gig SSD drive. And I have some shares set up. Uh, I went with the default shares, app data, domains, ISOs, uh, system, and I created one called Media. And what I've done is actually started copying some, it's like a backup to my backup to my backup of my uh, video files, uh, my DVDs and TV shows and that kind of thing. So here you can see the motherboard. It's the uh, Gigabyte Z77DS3H. Uh, version F9 of the BIOS, I've got uh, a uh, i7 3770 at 3.4 uh, gigahertz. I've got 24 gig of RAM. I can put up to 32 gig in this unit. Uh, you can see it's monitoring my temperatures. And uh, let's see, so my shares got no dockers, no virtual machines running. My array is in good uh, shape, good health. So I come over here to main, you can see how much of my array is in use, how much disk space. And of course I've got one, one drive reserved here for parity. Uh, let's see, I've got my drives set to automatically spin up. And then over here on the shares, you can see I created a share called media and I have copied some data into there. Um, under settings, uh, let's see, anything to show you here? Yeah, one important thing under settings, you want to make sure you go to disk settings. And you, you're you going to have horrible write speeds if you don't change this tunable MD write method. They'll start out okay, and then they'll, they'll go down to about 20 or 30 megabytes per second. So I had a subscriber tell me, uh, tell me about this. Turn on reconstruct write under here. And I set my array to start up automatically when on RAID starts. So that's a couple of little helpful hints uh, for you. On the plugins, these are all the plugins I use. I didn't show myself installing them. Uh, Space Invader 1 has got a great series of videos out there. More, mine is more of a video where I'm showing you the end result of how I got, you know, what I'm using on RAID 4. So I'm using the community apps. Uh, the Dynamics cache directories, uh, SCSI devices, SSD trim, system information, system uh, stats, the Dynamics system temperatures, nerd tools are very important to have, uh, pre-clear disks if you're using, uh, I would only use that on brand new disks if you know that your disks are good. I really don't see a reason to pre-clear the disks. Some people will get, disagree with me and that's fine. Uh, unassigned devices, and then uh, the user script plugin. Uh, under Docker, you can see I've got no Docker containers running. I have no VMs running. Uh, there's the apps page. Here's that little stats plugin. It gives you a nice little representative view, a statistical view, and a graphic view of uh, how much drive space is in use. And then uh, under system stats, your CPU memory uh, network and storage and then under tools just so you can see if I go to system devices you'll see here in IOMMU group one is that AMD RX 570 video card and the audio device and then I have in a separate IOMMU group is the onboard video controller for the uh, or for the uh, i7 processor you can see I've got my USB, uh, one of my USB uh, hubs is isolated in its own IOMMU group. Then uh, the other one I've got down here, which is unusable, you'll see that's also grayed out. That's because of my boot disk for my USB, that internal header connector is what I'm using for that. Uh, and then if we come down here to the bottom... You'll see that I do have the uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 950 in its own IOMMU group, so I could isolate that out if I needed to. And then the other thing it tells me is my CPU pair pinnings. That's going to come in handy when I go to create virtual machines. But 
basically there is my Unraid setup running 6.9.2. So now I'm ready to stuff this 4U unit back into the rack. And then uh, I only need to bring it up and running when I'm doing projects on it. So there you go. So there you go. It's built. It's configured. It's up and running. Uh, we've got the drives already synced up. You know, it takes a little while to build the parity. I would say for these four two terabyte drives, it took me a better part of a day to get the parity uh, done on the drive. So you just need to plan for that. Now, Space Invader 1 likes you to zero out your drives to run that, um, to run a, another utility. You can go check out his videos. He goes into a le little deeper dive. And I would recommend that with new drives, but seeing as these are drives I've been using for years, it doesn't make a lot of sense to to run that on there uh, if I run into issues these are not this is not a critical array and you should have backups anyway if it is so now that we've got it built probably the next video I do is going to be on getting uh, Windows 10 virtual machine set up on here and starting to play with the video pass through on this shin because that's the main thing I want to play with first of all and then uh, we'll do other things like maybe USB keyboard mouse pass through that kind of thing I'm doing these videos on Unraid because I actually like it and I'm very curious about playing with it and getting it to work the way I want it, want to. So it's an added bonus that they have excellent people over there at Unraid that really take really good care of their, their customers. I can't tell you the number of times I've lost my key or overwritten it by mistake. This time I've clearly marked my key so that it doesn't happen again. And, but they've, they've always been great. They've never questioned me and and always uh, fix my problem when I ask for it. So that's an added bonus, but uh, unrated, in my opinion, is well worth every penny you pay for it. So there you go, folks. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative, if not a little repetitious. <laughs> and we hope uh, that you appreciate it. Uh, give a thumbs up down below if you liked it. Leave your comments in the comment section. Donate if you're so inclined. We accept PayPal, Patreon, and we also accept the YouTube uh, join function. So if you see a little button under YouTube, it says join. It'll, uh, it's automatically reoccurring $2 a month membership. You set it and forget it. And you go to help. Uh, that money goes to help support, keep the lights on, and get new products in here to test. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to more of these Unraid videos. I'm looking forward to learning Unraid and sharing it with you. And we hope, uh, we hope you enjoy them. And please don't forget to come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.